131st Contact, Sunday, June 15, 1980, 105M, pages 485, 496. Billy says long, long has it been, my child. Semyaza says I was on the move again. But now I had to come here, because we must carry out our film work. Billy says naturally. I also have an idea for that. How would it be if I would first go out and search the area for a suitable place? A place where we won't be constantly disturbed? Semyaza says the idea is not necessarily good, because such a place can hardly be found in Switzerland or in the neighboring states. Billy says why not? Semyaza says the European states are precisely those of the earth that, due to the irrationality of the human beings of earth, are so densely populated that an impeccable place can hardly be found. Billy says but nevertheless, there are places in Germany and also in the Swiss Jura mountains where there are no residential buildings, etc. Semyaza says you suppose that. But it is probably best if you clarify this fact on the spot. But you know how much we have to be careful, that there are no inhabited buildings within a radius of 1000 meters and that also no human beings are walking or otherwise resting there in the area. If that is not so then we will have the same difficulties as before, when we dealt with film and photo works. Billy says that is clear to me. Therefore, I also want to go to Munich today to find a place there in the area that is secluded enough. Semyaza says that is impossible. Nevertheless, we will take pictures of one of our telemeter discs. However, these are magnetic path bound, which is why we cannot bring one of these down to the Earth's surface outside a terrestrial magnetic path. Billy says but, where should I go, then, to find a place? Semyaza says that is simple to explain one of the most decisive paths runs almost exactly through the middle of the Jura Mountains, of which you have spoken just now. Even from your center, bringing down a telemeter disc is possible on both sides of 150 kilometers of airline each. So if possible, you should remain in your country and, thus, not try to find a place in the neighboring states. You should make sure that we can carry out our work in a place in Switzerland. This is of importance because Switzerland is considered as a neutral state. Billy says I understand. Your words also mean, therefore, that the magnetic path mentioned by you has a diameter of about 300 kilometers, solely in which it is possible to take pictures of a telemeter disc, as you can only bring them down within this distance. Semyaza says that is right, but don't make yourself any great hopes that you can find something really suitable in the aforesaid space of the Jura. Especially in Switzerland, the human beings are so irrational that everywhere there, they have built their residential buildings and other buildings in a landscape defiling man, where the most beautiful places are. Billy says I know already, but something must still be able to be found. But how is it in this respect at the Pleiades, do you still have large and open areas? Semyaza says sure, because firstly, we keep our population at the number of the natural state, and secondly, every inhabitant of our worlds is careful to ensure that kilometer-wide areas remain free of any buildings. We love the freedom and the vastness of the land, which is why everything is arranged in such a way that a tightness never results. Thus, the large settlements, the cities, are limited to a minimum number, as is also the case with the villages. All the individual residential buildings, however, in which families live with no more than five persons, comprise a square of 100 x 100 meters outside the cities and villages. Billy says you mean that five people at most and so therefore, a family, live in such a square parcel of land and that also their house stands on this piece of land. Semyaza says sure. About one third of our population lives in such a way, while the other two thirds of our population are concentrated in the few cities and villages, but they are fitted with very large wooded or low planted parklands underground and above ground. Also, every small or large residential building, 
in which more or less families live, like with you in the multifamily dwellings is equipped with a 100 x 100 meter large park garden, which is jointly used, however, by all inhabitants of the city dwelling or village dwelling concerned. Billy says I find that fantastic. So thus each high-rise building or apartment building has its own park. Samyaza says sure. Billy says it would be nice if that was also the case on earth. So the villages and cities are also area than here, which gives the human being a certain sense of freedom and of expanse and also of solidarity with nature. Samyaza says that is so, yes. Billy says and, how is the weather on error? Do you have anything better thereof? Samyaza says with us, there is no severe weather and there are no natural disasters, such as are common in the current time on earth. Billy says I can imagine that, because our weather disasters and natural disasters are not all as natural as they usually look. I know that they are mostly caused by the human beings themselves. Samyaza says that is of correctness, even if the terrestrial scientists and other responsible persons and no tales deny this fact. The human being of Earth is to blame for about 50% of all severe weather and natural disasters on the Earth at the present time. Billy says I know. In the main and in first place, the atom bombs are to blame for this, then in second place is chemistry with all of its products, exhaust gases and wastes, then in third place are the aircraft armed, therefore, the airlines and the armies then automobiles and industries as well as the whole of humankind with all environmentally destructive evils. Samyaza says so stands the sequence in the approximate, yes. But as it also always is, the fact is today that through the fault of the whole of terrestrial humankind, much of the mainland will slowly but surely become a water-infested Martian swamp, in which disease and death will reign. Billy says you mean because of the rain? Samyaza says not only because of this rain, no, but because the natural climate has been destroyed through the fault of the human beings of Earth, and the Earth has already been oversaturated with rain for decades, as will also happen, however, in the coming time in even worse measures. Billy says you mean that the Earth will drown in the water or in the rain? Samyaza says so it will come approximately through the fault of the human being of Earth himself. Billy says and nothing can be done against it, I know, because the human beings of this world neither let themselves be taught, nor do they want to change. Samyaza says that's right. Billy says so they now also bear, so to speak, a share of the blame for the fact that it rains so much that one might think that a new deluge would come. Samyaza says that's also right. Billy says it's a good thing that you lifted me up into the ship, because I would certainly be drowned in a hole somewhere if I would have had to march through the area. Samyaza says in your summer clothes and in slippers, such a course would, indeed, have been quite difficult for you. Billy says certainly, but tell me, can't you land with the ship in the Monaro landing below, in spite of the rain? in order to once again leave a decent landing track impression, if this pouring rain never stops. Samyaza says if you want, I can do that. The impressions are not affected by the rain, and they keep for a long time. Billy says then please, down with the box. Ah good, here is the right place. Samyaza says do you want to get out? Billy says in this pouring rain, I'd become soaking wet and drown in this. Samyaza says oh no, I'll put the protective screen over the ship, on which the water will then roll off. Billy says and that works? Samyaza says but of course. Billy says but then the tall grass is still soaking wet, and I with my house slippers. Samyaza says that is no problem, my friend, wait a moment. Billy says what are you doing there? Samyaza says we can get out, and in a few seconds, the meadow will be as dry as if the sun had shone down on it for many hours. Billy says you've got to be joking, eh? Samyaza says of course not. Come and see for yourself. 
Billy says okay. Ah, fantastic, everything is actually dry. Ugh, up there, however, a mighty rose and lightnings, ah, man oh man, it is, indeed, firing up there quite hellishly. Semiaza says here under the protective screen, you can see everything much more sharply and more clearly than is possible outside of it. Billy says already in the ship, it appeared to me as if hell was burning outside, but this here is even much more powerful. Semiaza says you see, that which is new often looks surprising. Billy says you telling me. But I also have a surprise for you. Only, it will hardly please you. But before I report to you about that, I would first like to know from you what recordings we will make first in our upcoming work. Semiaza says it would probably be good if you would first make the sound recordings of the noises of my ship. We must begin with the work, however, as soon as possible, no later than 14 days calculated from today's date. But now tell me what you have indicated just now. Billy says you probably not even curious, eh well, you'd better brace yourself. However, because I would like to make it clear to you that I have laid down the leadership of the center and of the group. This at least for the time being, because I simply can no longer handle it right now. Time will prove whether it will remain like this. At least at the moment, however, I see no end. Semiaza says. Billy says it is really so. Semiaza says but. Billy says I just can't do it anymore, although I still want to do the film and photo works. I still want to do that but only because I hope that the people in America can use these, for they have proven to me that they take everything very seriously and also strive for everything in such a way as what actually should have been the case with our group. But over all the years, these haven't even reached a tenth of what they should have reached, which is why I find that continuing no longer makes sense. The best way, therefore, is probably that I drop everything and hope that the Americans can make more out of everything that is available so far, and that's only just the material, but no more. Semiaza says your decision hits me hard indeed, but not as surprisingly as you assume. I also don't want to try to dissuade you, because I know only too well how your words correspond to the truth. If your decision is so made, then I will also accept it. This all means, however, that this can be the beginning of the end of the center and of the group established in this country, because if you are not going to assume the leadership again, then it actually means the end. I am well aware that several group members are of the mistaken view that they could carry on everything if you take your consequences, but in this respect, they are badly mistaken. Not one of the group members is currently capable of leading the group itself as well as its interests and the center, this neither as an individual nor collectively. It will therefore be the case that confusion will already begin in one or two months. Irrational changes and other reforms will inevitably appear in the near future, and your long-standing directives will be ignored, which will very quickly lead to chaos. Also the financial budget will badly falter and the relevant obligations will no longer be able to be kept, which means that the center will soon have to be given up if a profit is still to be gained. But also the material order all around the buildings will be impaired very soon if you no longer have an influence on it with your sense of order. So factor will bind to factor, and the final ruin will be unstoppable. Billy says that is known to me. However, some will appeal to the fact that you once said that it would be sufficient if only three people would continue. Semiaza says that is rather dumb and thoughtless, because this statement solely referred to the fact that this would be the case if these three persons fully corresponded to our expectations. Billy says I know that, yes, but the group doesn't want to admit this. The group members still believe that they are man enough to be able to manage it all alone. Semiaza says they truly are not, however. Up to now, it only worked because you held and led everything with your strong hand and your strong arm. But how has the group decided, then, on the further leadership? Billy says as was explained to me, the whole group should decide everything, and then Engelbert must give the final word to it. 
Semyaza says I had actually expected such an illogical decision, which is even statute breaking moreover. The statutes state that an individual must be determined as the leader. And why have you not determined such a one, as this has lain in your duty? Billy says unfortunately, I could find nobody in the group who is suited for it. Semyaza says you did logically have to come to this determination, as it corresponds to the facts. Billy says all group members think that the leadership is child's play and that everything is all ready to be managed. I heard so surreptitiously even the dumb opinion that I always just dramatize anything and everything and that everything never looks as bad as I make it out to be in each case. Such is the opinion. Semyaza says then the group members will now slowly open their eyes, because I know that you have always previously made understatements in all things. Billy says I think that this will become visible already quite soon. Semyaza says I fear that too. Billy says well, I've made my decision, and the leadership is already released, at least for the time being. Semyaza says I admire your patience that you have held out for so long. Billy says you and yours, too, in the end. Semyaza says that is a different case. But it corresponds to the correctness that practically no successes were achieved by the group members in the forms in which these could have been expected. Truthfully, it is the case that after the beginning of the studies of the meditation and all teaching, each individual group member should have been so far after about 12 to 14 months that dialogue conversations with one's own subconsciousness and conversations on the power of creation could have begun. But today, every single group member is still so far removed from this point as approximately at the beginning of the studies. Billy says I saw no way to change this because no one would have even been able to understand that such things must be done. Semyaza says an explanation relating to this or such an attempt also wouldn't have changed anything. It was only illogical of us and you that we concede in everyone a new chance over and over again anyway and harbored empty hopes. But maybe everything or even something of the whole task could be saved if you would once again seek a new beginning for everything. You could. Billy says I can't do that, and I don't want to do that. I simply see no hope. Semyaza says you interrupted me too soon, because I wanted to say you could seek a new beginning at another place. Billy says but I wouldn't know where and also not how, because we'll never do that with our people, even though they have almost all predetermined themselves for it. If I wanted to find a new beginning, then I would have to have completely different people for it, namely those who have enough self-initiative and sense of duty to get behind it with zeal and pull everything destroyed out of the mud, whereby our current people would then be swept along and would learn from each other. As it stands now, however, it is the case that precisely the group members who would have to teach the human beings of this world, these group members must ironically be taught by the human beings of this world if they are to become valid as group members. Nearly every group member, however, believes that he or she is more knowing and more able than the unknowing human beings, but the truth is that precisely the group members are more unknowing and more imperfect than the unknowing ones themselves. That's how I see it. Semyaza says and with that, you see the things in the right light. The group members assume that they are better than the other human beings of the earth, but exactly here the case is the other way around. Among the group members themselves, there prevails dishonesty, discord, deceit and strife. One thing is told in a certain way to one and this is retold differently to the next one. Moreover, the illogicality still prevails, that ones act childishly in many things and even untruthfulness is spread all that has not changed. And so you have now set aside the leadership of and over everything, I cannot conceal these things any more and must express them once with a very open word, which may then be useful, such that the fallible ones will think about everything thoroughly and go inside themselves and really change themselves now. Billy says but with this, you haven't explained to me how you imagine a new beginning, of which you have spoken, nevertheless. 
Also, you leave me in the dark as to where this might be. Semyaza says sure, I have forgotten that I'm thinking first and foremost of America, but surely some other good place could be found, if it should be necessary. In America, however, there would also be available the foundation of necessary human beings, who will be only too happy to take on the fulfillment of the task in a good and responsible and proactive framework. Billy says but you explained to me once that you would not be involved there because another group of your federation is working there and because you want to have nothing more to do with America. Semiaza says that's right, but we have discussed this possibility recently and have found a way that we could make a change, so we could maintain our contacts with you even if you would go to the USA. We only want to have nothing more to do with the American government and those involved in this. And also, you and the group members would have to keep yourselves away from these. Billy says that is, indeed, news. But how does this stand with the fact that you've warned me several times about America? How does that make sense? Semiaza says we would have to give you strict instructions, in accordance with which you would then have to be directed. Billy says that certainly wouldn't be difficult for me. I'll think about everything thoroughly, but there will probably no longer be a return for me, if everything doesn't change quickly and thoroughly. Semiaza says I also don't want to change your mind. It's just a shame that everything so far will have been in vain at least in terms of all the works for building up the center. Somehow, all of you have connected yourself with it nevertheless, with the center I mean, for which you have been working so much. Billy says that could all be forgotten rather quickly if a new and more valuable, logical, and successful beginning could finally be found. Certainly, I felt right at home in the center for some time, but already for a long time, Everything and even every blade of grass just screams everything negative at me, and it is a bad ordeal for me each time when I am abroad and have to return back to the center. It looks so bad already. Hence, it has practically already become nearly impossible for me to still be able to live and work there. So I can hardly even create the next spirit lessons because it just hardly goes anymore. Next, I'll turn my whole office upside down once again do alterations to everything and fumigate it, so that maybe something can work once again, at least so long until it is actually on its last legs. But if everything should still turn to the better in the foreseeable future, then I can resume my work at any time. Semiaza says you have already carried out such a change on several occasions and for the same reasons. Perhaps all this will, despite everything, add up for the good. Moreover, you should not disregard our common agreement and also should not forget it. Billy says I haven't really thought on that. And about the changes yes, it really went well again in each case. This time, however, it is so bad that I can only create something with all effort. And you can tell how bad it really is by the fact that I had to remove my entire flower garden out of the office because all my flowers and other plants died off. These were slowly but surely destroyed because my place of peace, love and working ability became a hearth of evil and negative. Semiaza says then everything truly looks as bad as you have described to me. Therefore, at least at present, no further remaining for you can also be taken into consideration. So has the beginning of the unavoidable end even been created. It is, indeed, very regrettable, but as the things currently look, it also probably can no longer be changed, unless you find the necessary initiative once more and a sudden change in all group members occurs, which to our knowledge, however, seems absolutely unlikely. However, this would correspond to the opposite of what we, in accordance with our agreement and my. Billy says I also see the things in such a way. But there would probably only be a new beginning if it could take place elsewhere and the necessary new people would be present, who could carry our group members along and be an example for them. Then everything could still really be fulfilled in such a way as you. Semiaza says sure. You shouldn't doubt it. 
Billy says I already said to the group that several times more has been achieved in America in just two years by non-group members particularly by Wendell Stevens etc. than what has happened in about six years here in Switzerland and by group members. But at the same time, if one only has the attitude that in America, the people are not burdened so much with everything possible and impossible like the group members here and one searches for an excuse in this pretext, then one can, indeed, expect no success. The same applies for the fact that against all truth, it is said that the Americans would generally have a better and different life and, therefore, not such strife and quarrels among themselves. Nobody wants to see practically that the non-strife and right living together is anchored solely in the fact that each individual strives inwardly and outwardly to finally become truly human and also to accept the other fully, without wanting to make this one into a template. But practically everyone says only as children do, if you change something, or if the one or the other changes something, then I will also change the evil. But if the one or the other doesn't change the evil, then I also won't change it. So it is always presupposed that first the one or the other should change something before one himself takes the trouble to carry out a change in himself. So everything is always only based on the demand, not concerned on the fact that through this, nothing at all is changed for the better, namely because the one or the other thinks and acts exactly the same and, therefore, nothing comes about. No one finally understands that the human being must work on himself tacitly and without demands toward others and must carry out the necessary changes for the better in himself, so as to achieve a true change and no longer offer a point of attack. Moreover, it is the case that all, if anyone exhibits any error to them, say, yes, yes, it's exactly like that, and, yes, yes, the error is right there, and, yes. Yes, that one is making exactly this error. But they do not include themselves because they presume that they are always better, which is why they themselves cannot bring this error to an end. If a human being just feels better than another, then an instruction is simply out of place. Added to that, however, there still comes the fact that if one points out an error, then openly or in secrecy one is cursed at and insulted as unfair which is why it is then also said, you, Billy, you have also committed this and that error in this and that situation, etc., even though I know that I've done the right thing, but this course of action hasn't been recognized as logical by the objectionable ones concerned and cannot be recognized as logical. Just take the fact that the same reproaches are also made toward Patai and Quetzal. To be sure, I don't exactly know the circumstances, nor even the exact backgrounds, which led at that time to the fact that Quetzal and Patar made an analysis about every single group member and, at the same time, brought up various complaints with various group members and told them their opinion. Except for one group member, everyone has taken it on the nose and has drawn a lesson from it and they also apparently recognize that Quetzal, with absolute right, has read them the riot act. With a single group member, however, Patai and Quetzal are supposed to have been mistaken and are supposed to have been unfair, which since that time is now regularly thrown at my head again and again, even though I am not even exactly oriented about what it actually concerns. I. Semiaza says I can very well remember these analyses, and I also know which group member allows no peace since that time and designates Quetzal as well as my father as unfair. She, Elsie, has neither processed nor deeply thought about all the things. Her thinking has only been superficial and self-centered, which is why she feels cheated and treated unfairly, above all by Quetzal. Your statement relating to this is, therefore, not new to me and not unknown, along with some other things that relate to the same group member and that are incorrect, which you do not know, however, and which I also wouldn't like to mention to you because of your health. It should be explained to you, however, that the analysis at that time was extremely accurate in every respect and contained no errors whatsoever, which even I myself verified when I found out that Quetzal was attacked by this group member and was designated as unfair. Billy says I actually still wanted to know that from you. But let's leave these issues now.
Can you set me down on the house place on the way home? Otherwise, in this rain, I would become soaking wet. Samyaza says sure. Billy says good, then I would still like to ask you not to transmit this contact conversation because I am not keen on having to speak completely senselessly and pointlessly of all these things once again in the group. I have quite simply had enough of it. Samyaza says that would be wrong, my friend. The group members are to receive the transcript of our conversation, in order to recognize the fact that their sown grain corresponds to an unripe crop. This is the correct way. Billy says but I just cannot talk about these things anymore, because it is to no avail. Samyaza says you only have to write it down when I transmit the report to you. They can then read everything themselves. Billy says but either way ones will then rake around me and will try to have me take over the leadership again and change my mind and decision once again. And all this with big and empty promises that they will now get their act together and change everything for the better. But I now know these empty promises only too well, and I don't want to and cannot change my mind anymore. And to that, there will still come the constant questions, and I, Billy, do I also belong to those who have done everything or many things wrong? Samyaza says I can relieve you of this question and its answer, because I know very well that not a single group member was not involved in the error inspections and that, therefore, each group member was faulty to the same degree and all allowed this to thrive so far in the negative, as is now even the case. A decision that would have come about within a few minutes through a rational and logical reflection did not come about within several years. This fact is particularly based in the illogical way of thinking and demand, that it cannot be expected of the human beings of earth that they, after thousands of years of faulty actions and faulty ways of thinking and so on could make a decision in a good and logical form within minutes and then also suddenly put it into action. But the counter to that is that even an illogically thinking and decision poor human being of earth can do this within minutes if he thinks with initiative and concentratively, and this also voluntarily concentratively, as he then also has to implement his decision in a continuous and success bringing action. We find the proof that this is so in the fact that we manage to teach some peoples of worlds foreign to earth within a few decades for the better even though these were behind the overall evolution of the terrestrial human beings in their level of knowledge and in their doings and actions as well as in their overall developments by several millennia. Two of these peoples have even overtaken the state of the overall evolution of the human beings of earth in the meantime by several decades, even though at the time of our intervention, they lived in the deepest, spiritual, darkness which was also an evil product of our original original ancestors, about which I would not like to speak now however. Billy says it would probably also be too much for today, which is why you better bring me up to the house now. Samyaza says okay. Billy says thanks, and then I will still go on tour today, in order to find a good place. Samyaza says sure, but at the same time, don't go alone. Take Jacobus and Engelbert with you. Also, for Engelbert, it is of special importance that he goes away from the center for some time for health reasons. Billy says I'll tell him that. Then by now. Samyaza says till we meet again, and despite everything, dear greetings to all. Billy says I am also to convey those to you, especially from Herbert. Samyaza says that pleases me very much till we meet again. Billy says bye, girl. The end.